we uh, welcome our online congregation. It's really, really, really lovely that we can reach out to you and bring God's message to you as well. As we gather for worship, we acknowledge the traditional owners of this land where we are meeting, wherever that may be, and we thank them for their stewardship of this land for thousands of years. We pray for their elders, past, present and emerging, and for the process of reconciliation between First and Second Nations peoples. Well, just a bit of an explanation of today's service. Uh, we are celebrating all saints and all souls. Uh, so if has anybody bought uh, a photo of a loved one they would like to remember, they can come up and place it on the table there now. But, of course, tomorrow is Halloween, the old pagan festival where the thin places of earth that the Celts believed in uh, came into being and it made it accessible for the living and the dead to interact. Of course, Christianity came along and put its own festival on top of that where we celebrate the saints, those who have faith in Jesus Christ and in God and the Holy Spirit and live their life. And then that particular day is followed by All Souls Day where we remember those who have passed away in the faith. So during the service, uh, these ideas will be reflected. We'll move from a more saints aspect through to uh, an invitation to come and light a candle for those uh, of your relatives or friends who have passed away and you would like to remember. And then we'll go into the more All Souls Day style of service. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Our call to worship. Almighty God, your saints are one with you in the mystical body of Christ. Give us grace to follow them in all virtue and holiness until we come to those inexpressible joys which you have prepared for those who truly love you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our opening prayer, let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for by your great power you have called us to a rich hope and pledged us a glorious inheritance among the saints. In time before dreaming, you sent the wind to stir up the sea of chaos and bring forth the earth. Through your law and prophets, you promised us that your kingdom would belong forever to those who embraced your holiness. Through your son, Jesus Christ, you proclaimed a day when the hungry will feast and the mourners laugh. When he was killed on the cross, you raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand. In him you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we might know that hope to you which you have called us and embody the fullness of Christ who fills all in all. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Hello. How are you all today? Good. Good? Good? Well, today it's a special day in the church where we celebrate uh, all saints. A uh, saint is a very special person. And uh, in, in the original church, a saint was anybody who followed Jesus Christ. So anybody who became a disciple. So can you see any disciples in here? Is there any disciples here? Well, put your hand up if you're a disciple of Jesus. 
โอ้เอ้ยพี่แกแฮนจ์อะเย่ you're a disciple of Jesus that's amazing and yeah you're here in church and you're learning stories about Jesus well when Jesus first came to earth when he was born and he grew up he was born at Christmas of course wasn't he and we're heading towards Christmas again so we're going to have a special Celebration called Advent, the first few weeks before Christmas, where we remember Jesus' birth. And then he grew up, and we believe he was a carpenter. You know what a carpenter is, isn't it? Yeah, man who works with wood and builds things. Very talented man. Uh, and then he realised that he was God's son, and he needed to tell people about God, and he collected. A whole lot of followers, but one of the first things he did was to teach them what it means to be Jesus' follower. And sometimes people might think, "Oh, I'm Jesus' follower. I'm great. I'm fantastic." But Jesus tells us that it is quite difficult sometimes to follow him. Sometimes people might laugh at us for following Jesus. Or because Jesus asks us to share with others, uh, we might get a bit selfish and hold on to something. Like if we've got a nice, uh, nice McDonald's meal and we see somebody who's hungry, and uh, we might want to share it with them, but then we might want to keep on hold of it and eat it ourselves. So Jesus teaches us how to live as a disciple and love one another. Be kind to one another, and to love God, and loving other people is a way of loving God. So, here, here we have today's reading. The first gospel reading we have today is Jesus is on top of a mountain because they often thought in those days that if you were up on top of a mountain, you were closer to God. So here's a picture of Jesus, and he's got. All his followers around him, and he's telling them how to love one another and love God and be a disciple. So there you are. The colouring pencils are there. Thanks, Colin. And uh, let's pray for you before you go and do your colouring. Loving God, we pray for these children of our congregation who have come here. To learn about you and how to be your disciple, we pray for them and their families, and we pray for the support that each and every one of us offer them. We pray for children around the world who are starving, who are without water, who are dehydrated and malnourished. We think especially of the kids in Somalia, which is having their worst drought in 40 years. So we pray for them. And we give you thanks again for these children of God that are here. In Christ's name, Amen. All right. Well, thank you, and we'll see your colouring later on. Okay. So today we're having four readings followed by four small reflections. So. Reading from Matthew 5, verse 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, 
and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. For the stories of the founding of your church, thanks, thanks be to God. So our journey begins. The Beatitudes of Matthew's Gospel <laughs> occur fairly early in Jesus' ministry. Up until this time, Jesus had been baptised and declared God's son. He had been driven into the wilderness and tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. He had begun to travel around the country healing people and preaching a message of repentance for people's sins. And he had called his first disciples. He was gaining some fame in the areas where he went and crowds were beginning to follow him. So he went up the mountain to begin to teach his disciples what it meant to be his follower. And what he taught them is that being a follower of Christ is not an easy road. He tells them to lose the pride that often we often have in seeking to be better than others. He warns them of the hard times, disappointments and persecutions they may face. He urges them to live a life of peace with others and to seek a relationship with God that is true and faithful. But as you do this, you will be blessed. To be blessed is to be made holy. In other words, you will be dedicated to God. And for this, Jesus says, we should rejoice. Do you rejoice in your holiness. We come now to the lighting of the peace candle. God of peace, we bring your world before you in love, seeking peace to reign upon the nations of the earth so that all may live in harmony. The beginning of this is to make peace with those around us and we signify this hope as we light these candles for your love to descend on us all. Amen. John 6 verses 37 to 40. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of, sorry, and this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it upon the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day for the good news that Christ brings. Thanks be to God. Jesus is there for us at all times. The world we live in is often overwhelming. War and the threats of war, violence, struggle many people have to gain even the most basics of life, such as good food and clean water. Jesus is adamant. Anyone who comes to him will never be driven away. We cannot change this world overnight, but we can change it one person by one person if we use the love of God and if we had the courage to try. If we try to do the will of God shown to us through the example of Jesus and continue the mission of Jesus that he began, then the walls of injustice, hatred and poverty will fall away. In having this living faith, we are promised God's loving gift of eternal life in heaven with him, that we will be resurrected through Christ 
on the last day, the great day of the Lord, when Jesus comes again. May this day come soon. We come now to our prayers of the community and what I've done today, I've chosen a uh, prayer by Bruce Pruer, it's called Australian Prayers and it, it's very fitting for all souls. Let us pray. Author of life abundant and eternal, we thank you for the cloud of witnesses who make the mysterious heaven a home for our hearts. Before you we remember those faces we love and those spirits we treasure. At radiant dawn and in the quiet of dusk, we remember them. Under summer skies with the farmland shimmering, we remember them. 
Through winter storms, amid frost and snow, we remember them. At the return of spring, with wattles clad in gold, we remember them. At birthdays and family celebrations, and in the festivals of the church, we remember them. When Christmas arrives, with its carols and candles, we remember them. In the house of God, as we sing and pray, in the trumpets of the dawn on Easter day, in the bread we break and the cup we take, with Eucharistic joy, we remember them. And Lord, for this community in particular, we bring before you those known to us in need of prayer. We pray for Cynthia and her family in their sad loss this week, for Laura and Ken, for Carolee, for Helen, for Jacqueline, for Sandra and her niece Desiree, for Ivy, Gus and Dan, and also for Nada. For Donna, for Chrissy, Brody and Kelsey, for Barbara, Paul and Lorraine, for Bob, Phil and Ron, for Cleanne Han's family, we pray for those as well. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, glory of the faithful and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of whose Son we have been redeemed, look mercifully on your departed servants, that just as they profess the mystery of our resurrection, so they may mean to receive the joys of eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. So I now invite you to come forward and to light a candle for those who have passed you would like to remember. the destiny of the righteous. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of God and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seemed to have died and their departure was thought to be a disaster and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. 
So here we dip into the Apocrypha, a number of godly focused writings that the scholars who put the Bible together couldn't decide if they should be included or not. As testaments to God, however, they have so much to say. King Solomon, King David's son, is supposed to have written this particular book, as well as some that are actually included in the Bible. Once again, we are reminded of being in the right relationship with God, a relationship of prayer and obedience, and one of serving him while on earth, so that we are assured that our souls are in the hands of God. Solomon speaks of death in this passage, the death of those who had faith in God. For those who have no faith, Solomon says that they see the life of faith as foolishness. To believe that God gives us eternal life is a stupid idea and that when we die and find there is no God, then this is a disaster. But Solomon reminds us that if we have trust in God, God will offer us his grace and mercy because God watches over us. In this, we have comfort. When our loved ones pass away, we have the certainty in our hearts that they are with the Lord. As Solomon writes, they are at peace. Is this your certainty? stand and sing again I heard the voice of Jesus say
Wow, good morning. My first thought is praise the Lord. We had the best day yesterday. To see this church buzzing again, to see the community come and share such a great time, it was just heartwarming. It was really heartwarming. Thank you everyone that came and helped. There was a lot of from Endeavour Hills came, which was a blessing. Um, all in all, it was a good day. So let's get down to business. Right, I'll break it down just quickly. Sausage sizzle made $122.60. Plants made $296.65. Cakes and jams, $425. Morning tea, good on you, Nada, $205. Yeah. So a total of $1,049.35. And then the op shop, I believe, was $350, might have been a little bit more. So a grand total of $1,389.25. So thank you, everybody. It was a real good day. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And I believe you're off to Endeavour Hills now to let them know. So that's good. <laughs> Okay. I'd just like... Get to you. There's one other, one other person I really like to thank, and that's Callum. Our yeah. apprentice that you had helped us yesterday, so <laughs> thank you, Callum. You did a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah, I would just... See, Paul? I would just like to thank everybody who contributed. It was... Uh, I wasn't here personally. I had a, a university commitment and couldn't make it. Uh, but I came here at eight o'clock before heading off to uni um, and the place was buzzing even then. There was so much activity. Uh, and from the bottom of my heart, I really would like to thank everybody who contributed. It was a, a great day and shows what this little church of ours can do. And yeah, special thanks to the kids. I believe they were busy all day, so that's great. So thank you, thank you everybody. Okay, so we're still doing notices, aren't we? Yes. Uh, next Sunday, the 6th of November, is Holy Communion. So a reminder for our online congregation uh, to, is it the 6th? Yes. Okay. Uh, a reminder for the online con con congregation to bring their bread and wine to share at the appropriate time as we share communion. Uh, Friday the 4th of November is uh, lunch with Endeavour Hills Church. Uh, that's at the Workers Club in Dandenong, uh, Webb Street, Dandenong. Uh, if you would like to come, I th it's 12.30 start, I think. 12, 12 o'clock. Thank you, Secretary. <laughs> All ministers should have a secretary. She didn't know it at the time, but she goes, there you go. Uh, yeah, so 12 o'clock at Dandenong Workers Club in Webb Street, Dandenong. Uh, great time of fellowship and helping to develop this new relationship with Endeavour Hills. On Sunday the 13th of November is our favourite hymn service. So there's only a few weeks left for you to put your favourite hymns to us so that we can sing those on that day. And uh, just a pre-announcement, Tuesday the 15th of November, there is an Advent Bible study at Endeavour Hills that runs for four Tuesdays, I think, uh, and that's a seven o'clock start. So uh, it's just things uh, that this relationship with Endeavour Hills is working with. Uh, so that's an Advent Bible study, which is fast approaching, isn't it? Okay. So, anybody else? Any notices? James. His nibs. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bruce. Happy birthday to you. Pray. 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 Thank you. This is from Revelations 5, verses 6 to 14. 
Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to break its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sun, and in the sea, and all that is in them, singing. To the one seated on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. So Revelation was written by a man known as John of Patmos. As I said a few weeks ago when we had a reading from Revelation, John had had a vision and he was taken up into heaven by an angel and he saw some wonderful things. It is a picture of the future, our future, and a future that was won for us by the grace of God and the death and resurrection of his son Jesus, the sacrificial lamb of God. In this reading, we hear John's vision of the lamb in the centre of the throne room of heaven, being the only one capable of opening the scrolls that will lead to the closing of human history as we know it and will lead to the birth of the new heaven and the new earth where there will be no more death, no more crying or no more pain. The throne is surrounded by the saints and angels from every nation of earth, myriads and myriads of them stretching as far as the eye can see and all of them singing songs of praise and glory. What a sight that must have been, if you can just imagine it. God on the throne with the Lamb, the four living creatures at the corners of the throne and as far as the eye can see, the saints and angels of the faithful. So no wonder that the four living creatures that represent the gospel writers cry out, Amen, which means so be it, and they fall down and worship God. Now, do you believe that God has promised you a place in this heaven, that you are a saint and an angel, and one day you will be in God's glorious presence? Amen. So we finished our journey from follow of Jesus and what that means through to being in the throne room of heaven, glorifying God in his presence. With that in mind, I invite Jim for our word submission. Our words of mission. Go now with your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And your love open to all God's people. Bless those who curse you. Love those who hate you. And treat others as you would wish them to treat you. And may God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. May Christ Jesus count you among his saints for eternity. And may the Holy Spirit mark you out for fullness of redemption. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race and in the resurrection of his only begotten son 
he has given believers the hope of rising again. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins and to all the dead a place of light and peace. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we truly believe rose from the dead. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.